Hello everyone. So we are Team Hamilton and today we are going to talk about three-dimensional viewing in computer graphics. I am Sumit Santosh Badale and my other teammates are Tian Lin Zhang and Damaruka Venkata Saita Lakulla. Let's go ahead. So these are our contributions towards the particular presentation. I would be talking today about 3D viewing concepts, 3D viewing pipeline and 3D viewing parameters. The other parts should be taken care of by my teammates. So when we talk about three-dimensional viewing, there are basic considerations which we need to take in consideration. So the first one being, we can view any object from any spatial position. It can be in front of an object, inside the object, middle of an object or behind the object. The second consideration is, this 3D description of objects are going to get projected onto a flat viewing screen. And the third one is, we use a volume of space is to, to like enclose the particular object and we introduce a concept of clipping boundaries. So these three things are the basis of 3D viewing and we are going to take a look at each one of them in depth in the coming slides. So let's understand a few 3D viewing concepts. So as you can see, uh, there is a small snippet where there is an object and there is a camera. So this is this refers to a basic setup of 3D viewing where your object is in your world coordinate frame and uh, you need to project that object uh, where your camera is sitting that is in the viewing coordinate plane, a viewing coordinate frame or view plane. So the setups ideally involve defining or setting up the viewing coordinate reference. It refers to the position and orientation for a view plane uh, as it is shown in the given figure. And then these, the, the actual objects are transferred to the viewing reference coordinates and projected, then projected onto the view plane. So this is the basic setup that we are going to talk about in 3D viewing concepts. And there are many softwares that help you create this setup directly on the fly. So some of them, uh, like there are a few examples of uh, a few softwares namely Blender and Chemdoodle. So Blender helps you view, render, and animate in 3D. So that's the very famous Suzanne Monkey, like uh, it is being uh, rendered in 3D using Blender. And in Chemdoodle, you use it basically for uh, viewing chemical structures in 3D. Like as you can see, there is a 2D representation and then you have this like a 3D image of that particular thing. And then this 3D image is going down in a 2D representation using Chemdoodle. So these are a few softwares. There are other softwares like AutoCAD, which help you do the same thing and model a 3D scenario using your computer. So now the basic concept and the foremost thing that you need to know is a wireframe. What is a wireframe? So when you talk about wireframe, it's the most basic visual representation that anyone can do of a 3D physical object. So it's nothing but a set of edges and vertices that you denote by drawing lines. Uh, and uh, it's a stick model. Like it's the basic model that you have uh, of any that you can make or you have of any 3D object. Then after that, the object is projected onto a screen space and rendered by drawing lines at the location of each edge. So but there are two basic types of wireframe modeling, namely pros and cons. In pros, a user gives a simple input to create a shape and in cons, basically there is no information about the inside and outside boundary surfaces. So these are the two basic types of wireframe models. So when you start 3D viewing or three dimensional viewing, the first thing that you do is create a wireframe model of the particular 3D object. So these are a few examples, wireframe examples, <coughs> wireframe models of 3D objects. You can see that in the first figure, there are two tables. One is the vertex table and the other one is the edge table. So there are eight total vertices and there are 12 edges. And then the particular uh, thing over here is basically a wireframe model where you have the particular edge and these are the vertices. So you can see that there is no information about how the surfaces of the cube look. Here, this is a wireframe model of a particular house. And again, you don't have information of how the surfaces look, but it is just a model with, with like a spatial orientation of lines, vertices, and different edges. 
So this gives rise to a problem which is called as a wireframe ambiguity problem in 3D viewing. So our computers generate wireframe models that generally don't have information about the surface or it just has information regarding the corners and edges in space coordinates. So it gives rise to a persistent ambiguity which, which in turn uh, poses a problem where you don't know how the surfaces of the model look. For example, in the figure given over here, you have no idea or no way to interpret whether corner A or corner B, which one is in the front. So this is a basic problem which is called as a wireframe ambiguity problem in 3D viewing. Some examples of wireframe ambiguity uh, problem uh, are, again, there is a stick model with 16 vertices and 32 edges. So here the inner cube is actually a hole, but there is no way to know which direction it is. So the later image, the image here is basically nothing but the interpretations of how or where the hole is directed. It can be looking over here, it can be up or it can be towards the right but there is no way. So this is a basic wireframe ambiguity problem that we need to deal with when we are considering wireframes. Let's take a look at a different concept which is called as depth queuing. So to make an object look 3D, we need to give it depth. That's the basic consideration and basic requirement. So the textbook definition says that a, mod a modeling atmospheric at attenuation by rendering distant objects at a lower intensity than near ones, hence giving them the appearance of depth. So this is called as depth queuing. This is the basic definition. So depth information basically plays important role to identify viewing direction. And this can be achieved by varying the brightness of lines according to the distance. You can have a cube and the front side of the cube may have dark lines and the back side of the cube may have lighter lines. So this gives you an idea that the darker ones are in your front and it is close to you and the, the ones which are light are towards the back and they are distant from you. So this is the basic idea of depth queuing. So again, when you consider this chemical structure, you have the this image where the depth queue value is zero and you have this one where the depth queue is one. So you understand that there are a few things which are being uh, lightened up and this one is, is the dark part of the particular 3D structure. So you know that this is on the backward side whereas this is towards the front side. So this is the basic code snippet that is used so that you can implement depth queuing. Yeah, so again, the same thing. This is also one of the examples of a chemical structure which, which is being implemented and depth queuing is implemented in that. Let's see a few more general concepts of in 3D viewing. So the first one is correct visibility. So the surface elements which are occluded by other surface elements are not drawn so that only visible areas are shown. So this correct visibility concept is that you show the things that are there and you don't show the things which are not drawn basically. So the surface elements which are occluded, which are obstructed, that are not drawn, they are not shown. Only the visible areas of them are shown. The second one is shading. So depending on the angle of view, again, it's the same like depth queuing. You shade the particular image light or dark so yeah so accordingly surfaces are color brighter or darker the third one is illumination models so illumination is basically providing lighting conditions so physical simulation of lighting conditions and propagation and their influence on the appearance of surfaces is are nothing but illumination models the fourth one is stereo images a separate image is created and presented with various techniques for each eye to generate a 3D impression. So this is the basic definition of stereo images. Going further, a few more concepts include shadows, reflections and transparency, textures and surface details. So these are the basic concepts. So as in shadows, if you consider, so the areas that have no light source or no line of sight are displayed darker. That's the basic uh, definition of shadows. Then again, reflections are reflecting objects show mirror images and then transparent objects are those objects where you can see the background clearly. Textures are patterns or samples on the surfaces uh, that gives uh, object a more complex look or 
a more realistic look you can say and the surface details are small dom uh, geometric structures and surfaces uh, that are simulated using uh, like tricks like it can be uh, orange peel bark cobalt stones or tire profiles so that are the surface details so these are the different eight concepts that you need to take care <coughs> and uh, know when you are dealing with 3d viewing let's go ahead go ahead and look at 3d viewing pipeline so the steps for computer generation of a three view of a 3d scene are nothing but analogous to a process of taking a photograph by a camera so to, while taking a photograph we need to position a camera at a particular point in space and then we decide the camera orientation how to make it face the subject and where the subject is standing so then we finally snap the shutter and then the screen is cropped to the size of the window and we have that photo uh, in our mobile devices or the devices that we have and uh, during that process the, the 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 scene is cropped completely which is happening in front of you and to the size of the the window of camera and the light from the visible surfaces is projected onto the camera film so this is basically 3d viewing pipeline so there are different blocks which are uh, which which are contained uh, in a 3D wing uh, pipeline that would be shown further. So this gives a basic idea of how it works. So as you can see, there are two images over here. The first image is nothing but, <coughs> it's a block diagram of what all transformations take place in 3D viewing. So you are first in model coordinate system using modeling transformation you go to the world coordinates then which are given to the viewing transformation uh, system then it goes to a viewing coordinate space after that you are, you give this to a projection transformation where they are given to converted into a project uh, projection coordinate system and then you give them to uh, uh, a normalizing coordinate system where it, it has two two jobs of uh, doing normalization uh, transformation and clipping and then it is finally given to the viewport if you consider these you can see that what happens is in each transformation so from object coordinate you go to creation of objects and scenes which are then converted to world coordinate then they are given to the then they are given to be uh, like then they're given to definition of like there is a viewing transformation happening which is nothing but mapping a region and orientation post that you give them to project them onto an image plane which are the viewing coordinates and then you get the projected coordinates which are then mapped onto a unity image region and then they are normalized and then they go to the transformation uh, phase where they are given to the specific device and you can see them on the device basically so these are the device coordinates So 3D viewing pipeline consists of these spaces, name, namely object space, world space, eye space, clipping space, 3D image space, and screen space. These are the same spaces that we talked about over here. And uh, so the object space is nothing but the object or the coordinate space where each component is defined. Then the world space is when you put all those components together into the same 3D scene via a transformation which is like a camera lighting defined in this space. Eye space is nothing but the camera at the origin which you have and then the clipping space is space where clipping takes place and you convert all the points into a homogeneous coordinate form which are represented in, in the form by using X, Y, Z, Z and W. The 3D image space is nothing but a canonical view volume, a parallel pipe shape defined by these coordinates and the objects in the space are generally distorted <coughs> and then the final is the screen space which is nothing but the device space where there are x and y coordinates as screen pixel coordinates so these are a few visual representations of how the spaces look so this is the object space and the world space so you can see that this is the eye over here and this is the space from where it is getting projected onto this and then this is the eye space for this particular object here you are clipping this object into this this particular uh, <coughs> side and this is the image space where you see that particular object in the defined coordinates for the screen so now let's understand how modeling transformation to viewport 
process takes place. So in modeling transformation, we transform from the local coordinate system to the 3D world coordinate system and we build complex models by positioning simple components. After that, we go to viewing transformations where we place a virtual camera in the world and transformation from world coordinates to eye coordinates takes place. So you can see that there's a small image which would briefly tell you how this modeling transformation to viewport works. And the last is one is animation, which is nothing but we vary transformations over time to create motion in them. So this is a mathematical representation and illustration of the projects. So you are in the world coordinates with 0, 0, 0, and your point is over here. Then you get converted to camera coordinates. This takes place using this transformation where you go from this 0, 0 coordinate system to Rx, Ry, Rz, and then these XYZ vectors are con converted to a UVN coordinate uh, system uh, using a rotation matrix. So you can see that M is a rotation matrix, which is given by this, which that transforms your XYZ vectors to UVN vectors. So in this process, M bar here is a left column of M bar, M bar here is a middle column of M bar, and for this, you consider the right column of M bar. And these uh, transformation convert you from a modeling transformation to the end-to-end -end viewport transformation. While doing this, we need to consider a few parameters, which are known as 3D viewing parameters. So in them, the first ones are view coordinates. So what do we do? We establish a 3D viewing reference frame. So it has two parts. So one is the viewing origin and another is Y view, which is nothing but a view of vector V. So viewing origin is defined the viewpoint of viewing position. Sometimes it's referred to as the basic eye position or the camera position. Here you can see this is the camera position. You can consider this as the viewing origin because you are viewing from this side. Again, you have uh, this, like this is the particular viewing position where you're viewing from this point. So the Y view is nothing but a view of vector which defines the Y view direction. So this figure is generated using a right-handed viewing coordinate system where your axes are X view, Y view, Z view, and uh, it is generally with a right-handed world coordinate frame. So the P0 is the point which is known as X0, Y0, Z0, which you can consider as the viewing origin, and these are the views. From here, you have defined uh, the particular view of vectors, and this is your world coordinate system when you're trying to view the object. So you can see that figure A shows nothing but different kinds of view planes and figure B as well. So this is the orientation of the view plane, view plane which is known as view plane normal vector n. So n is nothing but a vector which is normal to the view plane, which lies between the viewing origin and the world coordinates. So you have here a three possible positions of view plane along the z view axis. So if you consider this z-view axis, on this axis you have different positions where you can place the view plane where the end vector is not perpendicular to the particular view plane. So you, it can be placed here where zvp is greater than 0, it can be placed here where zvp equal to 0, or it can be placed here where zvp is smaller than 0. So these were all the view planes which is one of the 3D wing parameters. Some other parameters include UV and viewing coordinate reference frame, where the direction of Z view axis is nothing but the view plane normal vector N, where direction of Y view axis is the view of vector V, and X view axis is nothing but a vector cross product of V and N to get U. So this is the right hand coordinate system that I was mentioning too, which is here you have the A vector, B vector, and this one perpendicular to the plane, this plane containing A and B is nothing but the cross product or vector cross product of A and B. So how do you find these? So these can be found out. Uh, if you refer the system, it consists of u, v, n, which are nothing but unit vectors. So n can be found out by n upon the magnitude of n. So this gives you a unit vector n x, n y, n z. U can be found out by a cross product upon the, the magnitude of this cross product, which can be given by u, x, u, y, and u, z. And v is nothing but a cross product of n and u, which gives you v, x, v, y, and v, z. So, the third part of 3D wing parameters consists of clipping planes. 
Clipping planes are used in 3D computer graphics in order to prevent a renderer from calculating like surfaces that are at an extra distance or an extreme distance from the viewer. So the plane perpendicular to the camera is a set distance away that occupies the complete viewport. So clipping planes basically preserve processing for objects within clearer sight. So you will get an idea of what exactly a clipping plane is in the next slide. So in this you can see that there is a normalized view volume and this is the particular object. So this you just consider the object which is which is which is uh, like in the part of that particular normalized view volume. So if you see clipping leads to clipping planes leads to a result which is nothing but a distraction from the realism or the reality of the scene. As you may notice that everything at the threshold is not rendered correctly and there might be things which may disappear spontaneously. So there is an addition of a fog variably transfer region of color or texture just be before the clipping plane can help soften the transition so that you don't have that issue which makes you feel that something is getting disappeared uh, spontaneously. So you get to know what should be in plain sight and what should be opaque and what should be beyond notice and fully transparent and therefore does not need to be rendered. So there are various algorithms for clipping which are being used. Uh, 2D clipping algorithms can also be applied to 3D and used to clip objects against faces of new normalized view volume. So these normalized view volume, these algorithms make sure that they clip the object against the particular faces of that volume. As you have a cube over here which is a vo normalized volume and you have this, this triangular shaped object, you can clip the object at this position at the surfaces of the new volume which is nothing but clipping and the algorithms that used uh, that are used in clipping include Cohen, Sutherland clipping and Lian Baske clipping. So going ahead the other part would be explained by my teammate Tian Lin Zhang. Thank you so much. Generating 3D viewing events by varying viewing parameters, different viewing events can be achieved. Here are some examples of 3D viewing events. We have the wide angle view, panning, and the walk around. So how to transform an object from world to viewing? The translation, scaling, and rotation transformations used for 2D can be extended to three dimensions. In 3D, each transformation is represented by a 4x4 matrix. Using homogeneous coordinates, it is possible to represent each type of transformation in a metric form and integrate the transformations into one matrix. To apply transformations, simply multiply matrix. Also easier in hardware and software implementation. Homogeneous coordinates can represent directions. Homogeneous coordinates also allow for non-affine transformations like perspective projection. So the transformation sequence before object description can be projected to the view plane. They must be transformed to viewing coordinate. World coordinate positions are converted to viewing coordinates. Conversion of object description from world to viewing coordinates is equivalent to a transformation that superimposes the viewing reference frame onto the world frame using the translation and the rotation. First, we translate the view reference point to the origin of the world coordinate system. Second, we apply rotations to Align the x v, y v, and z v axes with the world x w, y w, and z w axes, respectively. So 
if the view reference point is specific to add word position x o y o z o this point is translated to the word ordering with the translation metric t the rotation sequence requires three coordinate axes transformation depending on the direction of n first we rotate around XW axis to bring ZV into the XWZ plane. In the metric, it shows that. Then we, we rotate around the world YW axis to align the ZW and ZV axis. The final rotation is about the world ZW axis to align the YW and YV axis. The completed transformation from world viewing coordinates transformation metric is obtained as a metric product like this. So here I have another method for generating the rotation transformation matrix is to calculate UVN vectors and obtain the composed rotation matrix directly. Given the vectors capital N and capital V, these unit vectors are calculated as these equivalents. So the my this method also automatically address the direction for capital V so that V is perpendicular to N. The rotation matrix for the viewing transformation is shown like the matrix R. So the matrix for translating the viewing order to the world order is shown as this. And finally, the composed matrix for the viewing transformation is shown like this. So where the T, T2, T1, T2, and T3. So for projection transformations, it is convert the viewing coordinate description of the scene to coordinate positions on the projection plane. Viewing 3D objects on a 2D display requires a mapping from 3D to 2D. There are have two types of projection. One is parallel projection and the other one is perspectivity projection. So in parallel projection, coordinate positions are transferred to real plane along parallel lines. It have orthogonal and obliquely. For perspectively projection, coordinates are transferred to real plane along lines that convert at a point. So one is parallel, one is at a point. So orthogonal projection of an object displaying spline and equivalents. It has a front, side, and rear orthogonal projection are often called elevations. So projection plane parallel to principal face usually from front, top, side, rear. So any orthogonal projection is a parallel projection, but not vice versa. Uh, for example, for the left is orthogonal, but the right is parallel, but not orthogonal. 
So, so for the orthogonal projection, we show more than one phase of an object are called X norm matrix matrix orthogonal projection. If such a projection is generated by aligning the projection plane so as to cross each axis of the figure at the same distance, the projection is called an isometric projection. For example, box drawn on board. So suppose wanted to do an orthogonal projection along the z-axis, then any point x, y, z maps to x, y in the projection plane. So we don't forget the value of z through it is used in doing the visible test. So in a camera, the type of lens determines how much of the scene gets transferred to the picture. In computer graph, the clipping window is used to use for this purpose. As with 2D viewing, OpenGL only allows clipping normal to Z axis. We can set the lower left, upper right coordinates of this clipping window. So in the Z direction, we can see where our plane is and also see what the near and far clipping plane are. So these are used to form the top, bottom and the two sides of a clipping range called the orthogonal projection view volume. So the clipping window and near and far clipping planes define an orthogonal projection view volume. So often this view volume is mapped to a normalized volume with x, y, z value between multiple 1 to 1 as the picture shows. So to do this transformation, we can use this normalize the matrix. This is about 3D viewing projections in parallel. The parallel projection view is obtained just by transferring the object descriptions to the view plane along the projection paths that can be in any selected direction related to the view plane normal vector. When this happens, then the projection path is not perpendicular to the view plane. It becomes parallel to the view plane and that is called object oblique parallel projection. This projection can be a combination of a top front and side views. As shown in the figure, we can see the particular object has a top view, front view and side view and how it looks from that views. Well, every, every projection has a map behind it and let's talk about that. Here uh, we can see the point uh, x, y, z. We are considering the point as an example and uh, the plane is the view plane. And these parallel projections are specified with two different angles, alpha and phi. Let L be the length of the projection line. And uh, we can see that XP, YP and ZVP are the projected points in a view plane where, which is located as at ZVP along the viewing Z axis. You can see this one. This line is the projection line. The position of this point is corresponding to the orthogonal position of the point where this exists. The same x and y coordinates are here on the view plane, but the z axis 
is different but this is not like that and uh, uh, the actual alpha is the angle between the projection on the view plane and uh, the point and where phi is the angle between the horizontal direction in the projection of the view plane you can easily see that alpha value tends between 0 to 90 degrees and whereas phi is between 0 to 360 degrees we can, we can either take, take this line as this much or it can be parallel to the plane I mean like this so at the time the phi would be 360 we can using the basic trigonometry we can easily find out like xp values and yp values where l will be the l1 zvp minus z here we can see the l1 is the cot alpha we can write the oblique parallel projection equations uh, like this like xp is equal to x plus where l1 is the cot alpha and zvp minus z cos alpha here these are obtained just by substituting the l values in this equation an orthogonal projection is obtained when L1 is equal to 0 which occurs at the projection angle alpha equal to 90 and uh, even the parallel projections have two different projections the cavalier projections and we are discussing about the cavalier projections in this slide oh, we can take the alpha values and phi values for different ranges but we take the maximum possible and the typical choices of pi as 30 per 30 degrees and 45 degrees which display a combination view of front side and top view of an object we can see here the when the phi is 45 degrees and the phi is 30 degrees we can see the three the three sides of the object and for the first case if the alpha is equal to 45 degrees and the views obtained are called cavalier projections two common user values are alpha which is one and two here we, uh, we make a point here all lines perpendicular to the projection plane are projected with no change in length these projections are called cavalier and coming to the cabinet when the projection angle alpha is chosen so the tan alpha is equal to 2 the resulting view is called cabinet projection for this angle the angle is in a mathematical approximation of 63.4 degrees and the lines of perpendicular to viewing surface as projected at half of their length we can easily compare the cavalier projections and cabinet here we can see this is not like a cube it, it's um, like cuboid and uh, uh, the length is, uh, the length and breadth and height are unequal and we are coming to the cabinet there are some some much more like the same in length or uh, the half the length as here the cabinet projections appear more realistic than cavalier projections because of this reduction in the length of the perpendiculars V volumes is a next topic for an oblique parallel projection we, we use the same orthogonal projection which was previously referred and uh, we select a clipping window on the view plane uh, this, this is called the clipping window uh, when, when the view plane is uh, when when we view from the view plane the view volume is only this one you can select a clipping window on the view plane with coordinate at positions like xw minimum yw minimum and xw maximum and yw maximum for the lower left and the upper right corners the top bottom and sides of the view volume are then defined by the direction of the projection and the edges of the clipping window we can also limit the extent of the view volume by adding the near plane and the far plane as shown here you can see the near plane and the far plane and the view volume exists between the near plane and the far plane these projections may be affected by different changes of the position of the view plane depending on how the projection direction is specified when the view plane is not in that direction and in some other direction it depends upon all, all of that in some systems uh, the parallel is the line connecting a reference point to the center of the clipping window therefore the moving position of the view plane or clipping window without adjusting the reference points changes the shape of the view volume these are the projection equations we are just going to talk about this because these are very referable and uh, useful for the next slides uh, consider as an, a projector vector related to the viewing coordinate frame as VP 
these for every uh, the coordinates are for every axis uh, we obviously consider x y z as the principal axis and we also know the tan phi is v p y by v p x and comparing the similar triangles we have a set of equations from the previous ones we can have these equations and later we can equivalently write these vectors as xp is equal to x plus zvp minus z multiplied to the vpx by vpz similarly for the y here we use all those equations and we can't easily made make these parallel projections ready for clipping so we need some transformation for this we are making a transformation and using this projection vector parameters from the equations in in the previous slide we can express the elements of the transformation matrix for this parallel projection this matrix shifts the values of the x and y coordinates by an amount of proportional distance from the view plane which is at a position zvp on the z and the zv axis the z values of the spatial positions are unchanged if vpx is equal to vpy equal to 0 both values are 0 we're talking about an orthogonal position and the matrix oblique is reduced to an identity matrix here we can see the identity matrix for a general oblique parallel projection the matrix represents z axis shearing transformation that's why we have the values vpx by vpz and uh, zvp multiplied to the vpx by vpz and also for the y y axis coordinates here we can see that all coordinate position within the oblique v volume are shared by an amount of proportional to the distance from the view plane this effect is called shade the object v volume into a rectangular parallel pipe as illustrated we can see that the particular object is made transformed to this volume this volume oblique is the previously what we saw and exactly without any transformation it looks like that the position inside the v volume are shared into orthogonal position coordinates by the oblique parallel projection transformation just the transformation doesn't make it ready for the clipping so we also need one more method called normalization because the oblique parallel projection equations convert object descriptions to orthogonal coordinate positions we can apply the normalization procedures following this transformation the oblique view volume has been converted to a rectangular parallel pipe as we see in the second figure here this one following the normalization as before in orthogonal as you uh, previously referred we again map the symmetric normalized cube with the left handed coordinator frame thus after the complete transformation you can see that m oblique normalization is equal to m ortho normalization multiplied to the m oblique because it's just an extra version of the orthogonal coordinate positions transformation of m oblique which converts the scene description to orthogonal projection coordinates and transformation of m ortho norm is a matrix previously referred which maps to the contents of the orthogonal view volume to symmetric normalization cube these clipping routines can be applied to a normalized v volume followed by the determination of v visible objects the surface rendering procedures and the viewport transformation coming to the next 3d viewing projection its perspective the perspective is a bit different to the parallel but has a lot of similarities and we will we will talk about all these in things even the parallel projections are easy to project in some situations such as for example uh, in simulating a camera we need to consider the ray trace from the objects in the scene following converging plots to the camera film pane these are projections on 3D objects based on perspective of the camera are called as perspective projections. Here you can see the projection reference point. Uh, this projection reference point is caused by the projection of objects to the view plane along the converging paths. This figure shows the two different and equal length line segments at different distances cause a different distance, a different lengths on the view plane. And converges at the projection reference point. There is also some path behind here. Don't get bored. This the further goes with all math and equations. 
we will talk about that clearly and sometimes we need to select the projection reference point as another viewing parameter in the graphics package but some systems place this convergence point at a fixed position such as viewpoint the figure shows the projection path as a spatial position x y z to a general projection reference point x p r p y p r p and z p r p here this point is on the view plane and this is our projection point and this is our final reference point what we consider them here is the coordinate position is on the view plane with x p y p and z p p then what about the points and how can we find like i want to have this point at this position what, what how can we consider and find that for that we need x equal to x minus x of x minus x p r p of u for every u value that lies between 0 to 1 each and every point on this line you can it can be obtained and uh, furthermore on going this uh, on the view plane the z is cvp as we know and uh, we can solve the z equation for the parameter u at this position along with the projection line like can we can also consider like u is equal to zvp minus z by zprp minus z from the pre from the previous here you can consider and rename uh, uh, after after considering all these equations we can have the u as this one Substituting the value of u, the general perspective transformation equations can be modified as like this so that these are in terms of z. So whenever the point is near to the view plane or on the view plane, the values changes for x and y. Calculations for a perspective mapping are more complex than the parallel projection equations because the denominators in the perspective calculations are functions of z coordinate of the spatial position. Therefore, we now need to formulate the perspective transformation procedures a little differently so that this mapping can be concatenated with other viewing transformations. Let's see some more interesting topics and uh, the perspectives are of three types, one point, two point and three point. This will be the one point perspective and these projections are play take are only happens when the projection plane is parallel to two principal axes like in this we can consider this as parallel between the y-axis and the x-axis and the projection point will be here over here so we can we can see it it converges to a vanishing point we can also say the projection plane is perpendicular to one of the principal axis vice versa as i said these lines follow along the principal axis and converges to the vanishing point here we can see a real life example of an one point perspective when, when we see like here, the, pro the projector object is only on two principal axes. One, we can find uh, like x-axis and y-axis and that converges it somewhere, we don't know. That is called the vanishing point. For the two-point perspective, these projections takes place when the projection plays parallel to only one principal axis, unlike in one point we see that the projection plane is parallel to two principal axes vice versa we can also say that it intersect exactly two principal axes here we can see uh, the illustration and also a real life example which depicts the two point perspective it's simply called as an we are being from the vanishing point this is a three point perspective coming to this understanding is a bit clumsy because uh, we can we can see like one two three axes converging at three different points for a three point perspective the projection should not be parallel to any of the axes the figure shows the left side figure shows the illustration and the right side figure shows the real life example how the view looks like here also we will talk about the view volume the view volume is not as we did earlier here the bounding planes for the view volume are not parallel as we saw because the projection lines are not parallel the bottom top and sides of the view volume are planes through the window edges and all intersect at a projection reference point 
we know that the center of the projection of the projection reference point this forms a view volume that is infinite rectangular pyramid with an apex at the center of the projection here we can see it goes for a long distance and we can find that it's an infinite rectangular pyramid a perspective position view volume is often referred to as a pyramid of vision because it approximates the cone of vision of our eyes or a camera continuing to the the displayed view or scene includes only those objects within the pyramid like when when we consider the near near clipping plane and the far clipping plane and this is a clipping window so that the projection reference point sees through this and only considers only the objects or the or we only render about v volume just as we cannot see the objects beyond our peripheral vision which are outside the cone of the vision the display view of a scene includes only those objects within the pyramid by adding near and far clipping planes as i said they, that are perpendicular to the z view axis and parallel to the view plane we chop off parts of an infinite perspective position view volume to form a truncated pyramid or frustum view volume this we call as a rectangular first and view volume coming to more theory sometimes the near and far planes are required in a graphics package package and sometimes they are optional usually both the near and far clipping planes are on the same side of the projection reference point with the far plane farther from the projection point than the near plane along the view viewing direction in parallel projection we can use the near and far plane simply enclose the scene to be viewed but with the perspective projection we could also use the near clipping plane to take out large objects close to the view plane and could project into unrecognizable shapes within the clipping window as here similarly the far clipping plate could be used to cut out objects far from the projection reference point that might project to small blots on the view plane some systems restrict the placement of the view plane relative to the near and far planes and other systems allow it to be placed anywhere except at the position of the projection reference point let us consider a special case what if my point is between the object and the view plane until now we are seeing this, this as an picture of the object and here is our view point and so that the clipping window clear creates a near and far clipping windows but when when our uh, projection point projection reference point is behind the view plane that's kind of question to think and depending upon the particular graphics passage package positioning for either the projection reference point or the view plane may not be completely optional but if you can uh, if you can obtain the image on the view plane it will be inverted you can use a three dimensional homogeneous coordinate representation to express the perspective projection equations in the form here also we are using the transformation to make it ready for the clipping the x h and y h are similar to that as i shown earlier for that parallel projections uh, where we consider let's see over there yeah these are the same numerators and the denominators here unless until we call the z prp minus z as h which is a homogeneous parameter here we can see that yeah that's one the perspective projection transformation of a viewing coordinate position is then accomplished in two steps first we calculate the homogeneous coordinates using the perspective transformation matrix as here ph is equal to perspective into p where ph is the column matrix representation of the homogeneous point this one and the p is the column matrix representation of the coordinate position you may be a bit confused how why i use the three axes as uh, four axes instead of three we'll come to that point in the next few slides being the normal position of the substitution of xh and yh we must also structure the matrix to preserve depth z value information otherwise the z coordinates are distorted by the homogeneous division parameter h which is the homogeneous parameter as i said this can be done by settling setting the elements of z transformation so as to normalize the perspective projection zp coordinates 
Here we can see that the matrix of perspective looks like this. The ZPRP minus ZVP uh, until unless uh, we had a similar matrix, but it is an identical in the, the case of per parallel. The parameter SZ and TZ are the scaling and translation factors for normalizing the projected values of Z coordinates. The specific values for SZ and TZ depends on the normalization range we select. Now it's time to for the normalizing of the view volume because for every, for the view volume which is transformed, we need to normalize it. When we divide the divide the homogeneous coordinates by the homogeneous parameter H, we obtain the actual projection coordinates which are orthogonal projection coordinates. Thus, this perspective projection transforms all points within the first view volume to positions within a regular parallel of pipe v volume which is rectangular the final step is the perspective transformation process is to map this parallel pipe into normalized v volume we follow the similar procedure we use it for the parallel proje projection and the transformer first from v volume which is a rectangular parallel pipe is mapped to a symmetric normalized cube within a left-handed reference frame here we can see that this is the normalization transformation that takes the taken place and this is the transformed first and beam volume when we consider it as a normalization it can it, it, it changes into cube it's not no, no more like a rectangular or a different shape it's not like a parallel pipe it's like a now cube okay here you can see the points as xw max are changed to one 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 and minus one minus one minus one that makes the values lie between the minus one and one. After the normalization, further we we need to be we already includes the, we already included the normalization parameter for z coordinates in the perspective projection matrix, but we still need to determine the values for these parameters when we transform to the symmetric normalization cube. Also, we need to determine the normalization transformation parameters for x and y coordinates because the center line of the rectangular parallel pipe view volume is now the z view axis no translation is needed in x y normalization and the scaling matrix of accomplishing the x y normalization looks like it's similar to the identical but we can see that sx and sy values are here from using the following operation the norm normalized perspective matrix will be the multiply the multiplication of these two different matrices we talked about the xy scale here up here and the oblique perspective previous in the previous slides and the normalization perspective after all the values and equations we have we obtain the values like this let's come to the clipping now now for all the perspective parallel and everything we have transformed and normalized now it's time for the clipping what is clipping what do you know about clipping let us see to an example and understand the situation this is a clipping plane that the near that the that it is near for the camera or the eyesight whatever it may be this is the far plane and discarding the objects outside and behind the planes and only considering the objects that that lies in between the near and far clipping planes is called clipping the, the, even the half of the object is uh, light between these two planes and it will be rendered this is clearly rendered but this is clipped and these are discarded. Applying 3D clipping algorithms to normalized boundaries allows the viewing pipeline and clipping procedures to be implemented in a highly efficient way. All device independent transformations are concatenated and applied before executing the clipping routines. And each of the clipping boundaries for the normalized V volume is a plane that is parallel to one of the Cartesian planes, regardless of the projection type. Here you can see that. The clipping planes have a coordinate positions either 0 or 1 or minus 1 and 1. If 
for the symmetric cube it lies between minus 1 and 1 as we can see these are the values let us talk about the 3d clipping algorithm the x and y clipping boundaries are the normalized limits for the clipping window the z clipping boundaries are normalized positions for the near and far clipping planes Clipping algorithms for three-dimensional viewing identify and save all object sections within the normalized view volume for the display on the output device. All parts of the objects that are outside the view volume clipping planes are eliminated and the algorithms now are now extensions of two-dimensional methods because these are not like more adaptive and uh, they only need similar and small changes for uh, for the two-dimensional methods to obtain the 3d clipping Here Why we use the homogeneous coordinates even here you can see uh, Previously, I have referred that we are not using Four three and we are using four this this gives like computer graphic libraries process spatial positions as four dimensional homogeneous coordinates So that the transformations can be rep represented as four by four matrices as is shown here after a position has passed through the geometric viewing and projection transformations, it is now in the homogeneous form. Here you can see the, this is a homogeneous form and it is obtained from M. The M represents the concatenation of all the various transformations from the world coordinates to the normalized homogeneous projection coordinates. And the homogeneous parameter H may no longer have the value 1. The homogeneous coordinates can be used and uh, uh, this slide gives the brief introduction. Uh, I will go through the important points. Homogeneous parameter does ha does not have does have the value one, and coordinate same. Uh, the coordinates are the same as Cartesian projection coordinates. It happens in parallel projection, but in when coming to the perspective projection, the function of z coordinate produces a homogeneous parameter. The perspective projection homogeneous parameter can even be negative. The value lies from minus one to one. The this can be changed. The changes can be happening uh, from positive and negative. That de all, all depends upon the packages, the graphics packages we we've been installing. And the effective method of dealing with all possible projection transformations and object representation is to apply the clipping routines to the homogeneous coordinate representation of the spatial positions. 3D clipping uh, uses some pra graphics packages to clip a three-dimensional scene using a additional planes and that can be specified in any spatial orientation. This cues, this slide is all about intersection of uh, a line projection uh, and a plane projection. And the clipping routines are implemented in software with OpenGL. Like we can see the uh, methods that are happening, happening here, the GL clip plane, the GL enable and disable. The ID is the identifier of the clip plane and the plane parameters. We have A, B, C, T. The plane then divides three dimensional space into two parts so that all parts of the scene that lie in one side of the plane are clipped off. Here we can see the figure shows the clipping a line segment against a plane with normal vector. This is plane and this is a line. The line and the plane gets intersect at normal vector. Then they say B, C. The objects behind the plane are to be clipped, and the spatial position X, Y, Z that satisfy this inequality X plus B, Y plus C, C plus D should be less than zero. When, for example, when we consider the values for these, any position or X value that less than minus eight is clipped from the scene. That's it. We use these references uh, for all the concepts. Uh, we are going to the textbook and different links out there. And uh, I hope all all of you got understood by everything and all concepts. And thank you.